assalamu alaikum in this video we will continue the third chapter of therapeutic exercise foundation and techniques book 7th edition as you have seen the picture in the video's thumbnail chapter 3 is about the range of motion and today we will discuss how to perform the range of motion techniques on patients in detail the previous two videos about this chapter that are available at this YouTube channel were on what is range of motion and the second one was about principles and procedures to perform the range of motion techniques on patients. In this video, we will discuss in detail the range of motion techniques of upper limb and cervical spine. And in the next upcoming video, we will discuss the range of motion techniques for lower limb and the lumbar spine. So starting from the upper extremity and in upper extremity, the shoulder joint is the main one because it offers wide range of range of motion techniques. For shoulder, the first range of motion that comes is flexion. This slide is showing two parts, A and B. A is showing initiating shoulder flexion while B is showing completing shoulder flexion. For normal motion, the scapula should be free to rotate upward as the shoulder flexes. If motion of only the glenohumeral joint is desired, the scapula is stabilized. The hand placement and procedure is shown in the pictures. After shoulder flexion, the next range of motion technique that comes for shoulder is shoulder extension. There is also two parts of the Slide A and B. A is showing the shoulder extension with the patient at the edge of the bed. How to perform is shown in A part. While the B is showing shoulder extension with the patient inside line and how to place the hands. After shoulder extension, the third range of motion technique for shoulder that comes is shoulder abduction and adduction. Abduction is moving the joint away from the body while adduction is moving that body part towards the body. So moving the shoulder away is abduction and towards is adduction and hand placement is shown in the picture. The important thing about shoulder abduction and adduction is to reach the full range of abduction there must be external rotation of the humerus and upper upward rotation of the scapula. After that, shoulders internal rotation and the shoulders external rotation comes. Shoulders medial and lateral rotations are very important. Medial is performed by internally rotating the shoulder while lateral rotation is performed by externally rotating the shoulder as it is shown in the picture. After this, the next range of motion technique for shoulder is horizontal abduction and adduction. Horizontal abduction is performed in the way, same way as extension was performed and adduction is performed in the same way as flexion is performed for the shoulder. The A part is showing the horizontal abduction while B is showing the adduction of the shoulder joint. After shoulders, horizontal abduction and adduction, the shoulders elevation depression, protraction retraction and upward and downward rotation comes. These range of motion techniques for shoulder can be formed, performed in two ways. First in prone and second in sideline. This image is showing all these range of motions for shoulder, how to perform them with the patient in prone. While the next slide is showing all these range of motion techniques with the patient in sideline. These were all the range of motion techniques for the shoulder. After shoulder, elbow comes. And for elbow, obviously the main range of motion techniques are flexion and extension. Control the forearm supination and pronation with the fingers around the distal forearm. Then perform the flex, elbows flexion and extension with the 
forearm pronated as well as supinated. The scapula should not tip forward when the elbow extends as it disguises the true range. After elbows flexion and extension, there comes the elongation of two joint triceps brachii muscle and two joint long head of triceps brachii muscle. Elongation of two joint biceps brachii muscle is not shown, but I'll tell you how to perform. Position the patient's shoulder at the edge of the table and extend the shoulder beyond zero. And how to perform the two joint long head of triceps brachii muscle is shown in this picture. After uh, all these range of motion techniques for elbow, then comes the forearm. For forearm, the range of motion techniques available are pronation and the supination. Pronation and supination should be performed with the elbow both flexed and extended. After that, the range of motion techniques for wrist comes flexion, extension, radial and ulnar deviation. Flexion is performed by palmar flexion. Extension is performed by dorsiflexing the wrist. Radial deviation is performed by abducting the wrist and ulnar is performed by adducting the wrist. In this technique, the range of extrinsic muscles to the fingers affects the range of the wrist if the tension is placed on the tendons as they cross into the fingers. To obtain the full range of the wrist joint, allow the fingers to move freely as you move the wrist. After the wrist range of motions, hands range of motion comes and the range of motion techniques for hand are cupping and flattening the arc of the hand at the carpometacarpal and intermetacarpal joints. Extension and abduction of the thumb at the met carpometacarpal joint are important for maintaining the web space for the functional movement of the hand. Isolated flexion extension and abduction and reduction range of motion of this joint should be performed by moving the first metacarpal while stabilizing the trapezium. Hand placement is shown. This is how you can place your hands on the patient's hand and perform the cupping and flattening uh, range of motion technique for the hand. After that, the range of motion techniques of joints of thumb and fingers come that are basic flexion extension abduction and reduction to accomplish full joint range of motion do not place tension on the extrinsic muscles going to the fingers tension on the muscles can be relieved by altering the wrist position as the fingers are moved after that elongation of extrinsic muscles of the wrist and the flexors and extensor digitorum muscles come by performing a flexion and extension of digitorum muscles elongation of extrinsic muscles of the wrists and hand can be performed motion is initiated in the distal most joint of each digit in order to minimize the compression of the small joints full joint range of motion will not be possible when the extrinsic muscles are elongated this is the range of motion technique for the flexors and the next one is showing all these range of motion techniques for the fingers of the extensors like extensor digitorum muscles. These were all about the range of motion techniques for the upper extremity. After that cervical spine comes and the main range of motion techniques for cervical spine are flexion. Uh, flexion that is uh, performed by forward bending. This is how the flexion or forward bending of the cervical spine can be performed. The second technique for cervical spine is extension. That is not shown but that can be performed by backward bending of the cervical spine. Like by forward bending flexion of the cervical spine can be performed and by backward bending extension of the cervical spine can be performed. After flexion extension, there comes the lateral flexion uh, and rotation of the cervical spine. Lateral flexion is also the side bending and this is performed in the way that is shown in the picture. The main, uh, there is one thing that is important uh, for extension of 
the cervical spine that is if the patient is spine only the head and the upper cervical spine can be extended the head must clear the end of the table to extend the entire cervical spine the patient may also be prone or sitting so these were the range of motion techniques for the cervical spine we have discussed in this video the range of motion techniques for the upper extremity and the cervical spine and in the next upcoming video we will discuss the range of motion techniques as in detail for the lower extremity and for the lumbar spine thanks for watching and for more videos about this chapter at this youtube channel subscribe us at physiotherapy lectures